Kim's. All right, well, well hey, welcome everybody. Man, wow, it's just such a, a pleasure to be here and, and have such a wonderful turnout. And if you weren't here earlier, I told that bad joke about if you've come to the hip session, you've reached Nirvana. Uh, yeah, and it's Nirvana 8, not B. Yes, that's right. This is an A-team right here. A -team. I mean, I didn't know that Nirvana was a, a, a multi-cast system, but yeah, we're the A-team. Different levels of paradise. That's right. I'll take it. We're at the highest level. So, it reminds me of a really bad joke, and you can all groan together when I say, what did the Buddhist order from the hot dog stand? Don't know. You just said, make me one with everything. Oh. Oh. That is so bad. That's terrible. That's, thank you, my colleague here agrees that that was terrible. Uh, Say, so we have a lot to cover today, a lot of exciting things. We, I know, we realize that this is something of a presentation slash user form, and we have some folks that are advanced folks, and, and you're going to be bored for a little bit, I'm afraid. Uh, maybe, otherwise you, you might be... Um, in, impressed with some of the things that we're going to be discussing with regards to the newest developments at PIMS. Um, so what we would ask you to do is hold your questions until after the presentation, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. You can come up and lay your hands on products. Um, let me just go ahead and, and, and welcome you and thank you for allowing us the presentation to present on behalf of CEO Randy Ahn the entire HIMSS Inc. team, and of course, our international partners, Selvis Healthcare and HIMSS International. With me, I've got Ms. Jenny Axler, all the way from South Korea. Yes. And I'm glad she's using the microphone this morning because, mm, why don't you tell them? <laughs> I, uh, well, you know, in Korea, they just lifted all the mask mandates, and so I've been wearing a mask for three years. And I think uh, <laughs> that tended to lower my immunity, so I have actually spent most of my vacation very sick. I do promise you all that I am on antibiotics. I am not contagious, however, I do still sound terrible, and I apologize for that. I also wanted to let you know before we get started that we are recording this uh, for possible use in a podcast, so if you do just you know happen to shout out, you may actually make the podcast and just be aware of that. <laughs> Unless, of course, you explicitly tell us that you prefer not to be included. But if you ask a question or something, you may be recorded. So I just want to make sure you are all aware. I am so glad that Jenny is here because during my part of the presentation, which is going to be on the, the new Sense Player, and Sense Player OCR, she can help keep me honest with some of, the, <laughs> some of the products. Not that I would deliberately be, you know, dishonest, but... Um, so let me go ahead and get started. I'm just going to talk about the physical orientation of the device. It, it is really very uh, reminiscent of some of the, uh, the candy bar phones that were on the, on the market a while back. Uh, but on the, on the front of the device, we've got a bunch of buttons. At the top, we've got these tack marked up buttons. There's four of them. Uh, and from left to right, it's mode allows you to select your, your most frequent used applications, your favorites, so, um, as it were. Next to that is the Wi-Fi button. Next to that is the Bluetooth button. And in the far right, the Smart Connect button. And we'll, we'll uh, talk about Smart Connect. Um, it basically allows you to connect to your phone and use it using, use your phone, if it's an iPhone or it's an Android phone, um, using hard, you know, hardware buttons. So where that comes in handy is, for example, when you call, have you, have you ever had that experience when you call on your iPhone and they say, please press one, and you're flicking around the screen and say, press one, and then, and then, and then so you press one and it's too late, and you say, please try again later. <laughs> yeah. Yep. This kind of does away with that, because once you know how to flip over the numbers, the numeric keypad, um, all it is, you can type in credit card numbers if you need to, and you know, make your selections from the automated attendant. So it is really a wonderful thing. Now I gotta admit to you guys, when they came to me, and, and let me know if you felt this way too, and they said we want to do a handheld device um, that does all these things, and I just kind of like, huh, ever heard 
a cell phone. You know, I find myself today eating a lot of humble pie <laughs> because um, there is just so much benefit from having one of these devices. Okay, um, back to the, the physical layout. Down below those four buttons that I just mentioned, I, I go off into the weeds once in a while. We've got the the um, four directional buttons. They're actually um, you know, obviously up, down, left, and right. And there's an OK button, which is round in the middle. That's your OK button. On either, and we've got four buttons surrounding those. And the one to the left of the up arrow is your home button. The one to the right of the up arrow is your menu button. So if you're a presence user, think of the home button as pressing F1. And think of the menu button as pressing F2, because that's kind of what they do. Um, down to the left of the down arrow, we've got the cancel button, and to the right of that down arrow, we've got the delete key. And of course, below that, we've got our T9 uh, telephone keypad, which is awesome. Um, everything, you know, if you're familiar with how Hims has done hard work in the past, uh, the Sense Player is really qu quite a, uh, a solid piece of hardware as well. Let me move over to the left side of the device. Now, at the bottom, we've got a SD micro slot. Um, I am aware of somebody on our beta team, I believe, has a terabyte SD card inside of his uh, sense player. Um, and he, it comes with red 64 gig, right, on board? Yeah. 64 gig, I think it's like 48 years ago, right? Yes. Something like that. 48 years ago. He says yes. Or 45. 45 years ago. Okay. So you can add a terabyte and just not worry about ever needing any more space again. But uh, while I'm at, on the storage topic here, to, to add to that, if you connect this device via the USB-C connector on the bottom, uh, it will, if you connect it to your computer, it'll actually see it as a mass storage device. So, Actually, so can I correct you? Yes, you correct me. Unfortunately, it's important, so I have to. I apologize. Well, that's okay. Um, so it actually connects as a media transfer protocol, and the reason that you care about that is because you cannot edit when it's connected. So if for some reason you're looking at docs or something, that's something <laughs> very important to know. Um, you are somewhat limited to what you can do, and it also makes the difference if you connect to a Mac, yes. which he, he may talk about that, but... Um, if you connect to a Mac, you actually can't do it without an additional application. So um, it is using NTP, but yes, you can connect using File Explorer, which is what is put and copy and paste. Yes, you can copy and paste. Copy and paste between the devices. So yeah. that, that's the point. Yes. Um, above the SD microcard, we've got the up and down buttons, and above that, we've got the selector that chooses what you do with those buttons, whether it's uh, voice. Um, volume, rate, or pitch, or the main volume. And above that, we've got a record button, which actually, you can have record internal audio. So when you're routing your phone call to your, your sense player, you can actually do it, is it a quick tap of the record still? Or did yep. you change that? Quick tap of the record to start recording uh, a, a conversation, maybe you're taking a, a technology lesson or something, you want to capture it on recording over the phone, then you can press it, uh, do a quick press, of the record button to pause it. Right, okay. Um, on the right side of the device, we've got two things. We've got the power button, which I will press right now. And file manager. And it came up as a file manager. I'm going to have to turn that up a little bit. Um, we're just going through a Bose Revolve speaker here because we couldn't get the, uh, the audio to work. And then below the, the power button is the uh, lock switch, which I actually have my locked earlier and I was freaking out because I didn't know it was working. So, um, let's go ahead and, 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 oh, I just heard that connected. Now I have a really slow internet connection because, speaking of not getting things working, I, I was not able to get on the Wi-Fi here, but I did connect to my hotspot. So, let's File go. File manager. We're going to go into the main menu. File manager. And I'm going to go ahead and down arrow through the manager. Media player. Through the main menu. Daisy player. So we got media player, Daisy player. Document reader. I'm only repeating it because for those of you in my situation in the back room, maybe you can't hear it very well. Document reader. FM radio. FM radio. OCR. OCR. Web radio. Web radio. Podcasts. Podcasts. Library services. And library services, which is a utilities. Utilities. 
uh, and data. Library service utilities. Utilities. Settings. Settings. All apps. And all apps. Well, that's the last item in this menu because if I press down arrow again. File manager. I'm right back there and rack back around the file manager. So I'm going to go ahead, up arrow one time. All apps. And I'm going to expand this um, folder, the all apps folder, and just give you an idea what I have in my sense player. Amazon App Store. So I've got the Amazon App Store, and I'm going to continue down there, and I will repeat the menu items. Apple Music. Apple Music. Audible. Audible. Bard Mobile. Bard Mobile, of course. Be My Eyes. Be My Eyes, which works Chrome. fabulously. Chrome, which is the browser that we will actually have on the uh, app installation area when, when uh, we do our next update here, which Jenny can talk a little bit about. Uh, finish. SB. Uh, ESB is a open source screen reader and it is also in that uh, application install area that we will, you know, people have the option to download and install. It's a piece of cake. You just press uh, the, the OK button on it and boom, it comes down and installs. Lookout. Uh, I actually have Google Lookout on this device, um, which is my, which is an OCR application if you're not familiar with it. <laughs> we have our own OCR application, and it's it's good for a quick and dirty. You want to recognize the mail or something? You want to identify a document? But man, a few months ago, I wanted to go through my my taxes, you know, because I had taxes from like 2003 or something. That's 20 years old, right? Yeah. So, but instead of having to sit there with a sighted person and bear my soul and listen to the comments like, "Wow, you didn't make much money in 2006." <laughs> uh, I was able to sit there with Google Lookout and just with a shredder standing by, and I was able to go through those things all by myself very quickly because on a stand, by the way, the Sense Player does have an optional accessory stand that you can buy. It's like 70 bucks. Um, and I was able to just go through it and shred the stuff myself, and I didn't have to coordinate schedules or anything like that. And it just, I put a, you put a document under it. it it takes the picture, it reads. It's, it detects when the document changes, it takes the picture and reads. It's fantastic. It also has uh, currency identification, product identification, as well as um, they're, they're beta testing the, um, what do they call it, scene or the environment? Yeah, look around. Look, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so. Netflix. Netflix, as I mentioned, we're on there. Uh, let's just go ahead and Go ahead and go into this Netflix. I'm gonna, I'm gonna press. You can either press OK or right Netflix. On this. Amazon. Please wait while we start the Netflix application. Image Netflix. Image. Okay. Button edit profiles. Who's watching? Who's watching? Button selected. Kelly J. Row one. Column one. Row two. Row. Really? Button girl. Column two. Let's see what girl's watching. Oh, wait a minute. This is a family show. Netflix. Right? Button search out of grid. <laughs> All right. Button profiles more. <laughs> Button TV shows. I'm just gonna Button movies. Grab some random movie. Button movies. And he's just going through this with the arrow keys. I'm just using the arrow keys, yes. Button all genres. Um uh, Run Rabbit Run. Run Rabbit Run. I read that book. <laughs> Button Run Rabbit Run. Um it's a pretty terrifying. Button play now. Let's see if we got an audio description on this one. Video button back. Button navigate up. The red letter N unfolds into a spectrum of colors. 20 years of umbrella entertainment. Show player Maslow controls. Entertainment. Hi. Thanks for joining us. We're just going to watch the rest of the movie. Four liquid drops swirl and multiply to Button form the Screen up. Australia logo. So. Movies. I'm out. It took a little bit late because I've got such a terrible internet connection here, but. As you heard, it's, it works just great. Um, so with that said, I think I've covered everything that I want to talk about. And again, hold your questions until the end because I'm going to just go ahead and pass it over to Jenny to let her cover the things that I probably didn't that she wants to cover. Go ahead. <laughs> well, to just talk a little bit more about the mobile screen reader. Do you want um, my device? Sure. There you go. Okay. You let me borrow everything with audio amplified and everything. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the Sense Player already, you know we have a lot of traditional navigation keys that we use everywhere. 
like one and seven for top and bottom, and three and nine for page up and page down, and things like that. You can also use that in the mobile screen reader. In addition, um, we do have some uh, we're working on. So Android has a really great thing with their keyboard navigation that lets you do um, item above and item below. And what this lets you do is move down and up by a screen line. And this is extremely useful. We don't quite have this done yet. Our developers figuring out exactly what keystroking needs to emulate. Um, so I think it'll be in next week's firmware. So unfortunately, I can't tell you right now. Um, but what we'll do, especially in something like Bar Mobile, for example, if you're familiar with the screen layout, layout of the Bar Mobile application, it has the media controls, it has the speed controls, it has, and you have all these things on different lines. So, for example, if you know that you need to move forward and you want to go to next, and you're on um, you're on the plate, you can use the up arrow then to go up one line instead of having to use the left and right arrows to go like on your phone you might swipe through everything, but you could also navigate the screen layout. So that's something that we're working on so that you'll be able to use the, the arrow keys to um, navigate the screen layout more like you would with your finger, so that will make it a lot faster. And then of course, as I mentioned, we do have the top and bottom navigation, we have the page, page down, we do have global media controls, uh, so that if you do need to stop and do something, you can just, they're the same as Smart Connect for those of you who are familiar, so use the bottom row of numbers, star, zero, pound with the OK key to uh, move forward back. The other nice thing about this is because you do have instant orientation, if you are doing something like you're in bar mobile and you've pressed play, it's going to stay focused on that. So if you know that you need to just suddenly pause a book, you don't have to find the pause button. Uh, you can just press OK, and you know you're going to be focused right there, and it's automatically just stop, and it, you can do the same to start it. So the nice thing about having people do ask, OK, if I do have a cell phone, why do I need this? This really is about the instant orientation. You don't have to search for, um, you know, you don't have to swipe the screen and search for what you need. You can just do it instantly. And for me, that's what I like about it. I really love efficiency. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention for Sense Player users, um, we do have some, we have added a lot of things that you have asked for. For example, I'm going to go to how many. File manager. Can I open your media player? Uh, media player. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's anything in there. Oh, no, media player. I actually don't either. Explorer yeah. open. Radio 17 list item. Record. Sample 4Cs and MP3 media file. Okay. One file's added to playlist. Okay, so I'm going to stop playback. <laughs> no, because I want to show you something in the menu. So I'm going to press the menu key. Menu open. Vivaldi. Explorer <laughs> zero long dialogue yes. menu item. Very good. Name that too. <laughs> Movement to unit settings dialog yes. menu item. Okay. Explore movement to unit settings dialog menu item. So we have this new option here called movement unit settings, and this has been an extremely popular request. And so what this allows you to do, and I'll press OK on it in a moment. Okay. Movement to unit settings dialog. Go to one track on list item. So now I have all the movement units listed. And I can arrow down. Go to five tracks on one two list item. And it's saying on one two. I can use the left arrow off list item to turn it off. So I'm going to back out because I want to change those settings. On list item. Um, I don't care. <laughs> oh, he doesn't care. Um, so what this is going to do is allow you to choose which movement units are on. Because what we've had complaints about is that I don't use this and this and this and this, and I don't want to have to arrow up and down through these every time I'm trying to find a movement unit. So now you get to customize your list. And you can do this in the media player, you can do it in the document reader, in the daisy player, and you do it separately for daisy audio and daisy text. You also can do it in the voice recordings playback. So pretty much any, oh, and podcasts. So pretty much anywhere there is a playback area, you are able now to customize movement units that are available with tone arrows. That's one thing we've done. Um, just a moment. Menu opened. Explorer mode zero along dialog menu item. Okay. Movement to you. Play information zero dialog. Go to number eight menu. Go to percent. Go to time. Configurations. Effect settings. Dialog. Save as playlist dialog okay. menu item. 
Okay, so the other options that we have are related to media and audio lists. So you can now, if you have selected several folders or several files, you can save the current playlist so you can delete it again so you don't have to go looking for everything. You also have the option to, um, for things that are placed in the audio books folder, which is automatically created by Android, so you have an audio books folder on your SD card, on any USB drive that's connected, or your flash disk, it will automatically create it. And if you put content in there, you can save it as an audio book playlist. And that's going to act differently in that it is going to save your bookmark position always, and it's going to apply to the whole playlist, not just the single file. You're not going to have things like shuffle and repeat. Um, just various things that are very specific to playing uh, MP3 audiobooks are going to apply to those playlists. And Menu closed. I'm so sorry. Um, so just as a matter of course, for those of you who are not familiar with Sense there, Earl wanted to mention the help and the tutorial. So there are three different ways that you can get help. One quick way, and I'm still in the media player, so I'm going to do this here, is to... I am still in the media One player. One minute. Yes, I am. Okay, so I'm going to press and hold the OK key. Key help mode on. So this is going to give you a sort of key describer for whatever context you're currently in. So if I press the number one... Number one moves to and plays the first item in the current playlist. Number two. Number two opens the go to time dialog. Right arrow moves forward by the selected movement unit. Hold continuously for cumulated forward time movement. So each time I press a key, it's going to give me um, the description of what it will do in your current context. So right now I'm in the media player, so it's going to tell me what it will do in the media player. If I were in the document reader, it would tell me what it's going to do in the document reader. And you exit that by pressing and holding OK again. Key help mode off. Okay. So the other way then to get the user manual is to press and hold the menu key from anywhere on the device. Sorry about that. Okay, no, actually, so FYI, if you press and hold the menu key, you will open the global options, and yes, I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, please forgive me. I am not at my best. Okay, um, so to open the user manual, you actually press and hold the cancel key. And I actually did the tutorial Loading. on this device, and you think Open, no navigation, way. menu, dialogue. <laughs> One, introduction 116 list item. So, now I've opened the user manual and I can just arrow down through the various sections. Two, getting started 216 list item. Three, basic functions 316 list item. Four, file manager 416 list item. Okay, so if I just wanted to play something, I would press the OK key and it's going to play as though it was in the document reader and it'll start in whatever chapter I'm in. Now, if it has subsections, we can press the right arrow. 4.1 executing and exiting the file manager 13 list item. Now I can see the subsections of this chapter. 4.2 exploring, selecting and opening content 23 list item. And if I press the left arrow, I'll go back. 4. File manager 416 list item. So this, and this went back to the main menu. So this is um, very similar to how the file manager works. Uh, FYI, again, if this is new to you. We navigate the same way in the file manager. In most things, you're going to use the left and right arrows to move in and out of subsections, and the up and down arrows to move among various sections in your current list. Okay. Sense player. User manual. And I just Model T90 and so T. Because I didn't... English manual. For software version 1, media player. So that volume's longer. <laughs> yeah, so you can tell the document reader has its own volume. Oh, that reminds me of something else we added in this update. Uh, you actually have the ability now to change the voice that you use for reading. And that is both in the Daisy Player and the Document Reader. So you could have a separate <laughs> voice in the Daisy Player, another voice in the Document Reader, and a third voice as your main reading voice. So that's a new thing that we added to. And that's especially useful if you want to read documents in different languages. Oh, but then your operating language. And let's hear it for chapter navigation. Gosh, see, it's good that he's here. Yes, so we have chapter navigation in both of the media player and the podcast application. So, especially for those of you who listen to Mr. Mosen's cast, which I know is a lot of you, you now can navigate the chapter. <laughs> um, okay, so help. Yeah, so this is the last thing that um, I should, because I, I don't like to do this because I'm really showing off and I don't really mean to do that. Okay, so. Um, Daisy Player. Explorer open. <laughs> Daisy 311 list item. 
Just Sense of player, OCR tutorial, 1-1 one, one list item. Okay, so when you first start the device, um, if you go to the Daisy player, you will be placed on a Sense Player tutorial. So if you just press OK. Sense Player OCR tutorial. 70. 100. Sense Player Audio Tutorial. Welcome to the Sense Player Audio Tutorial. This tutorial will give you a physical orientation to your Sense Player. You hear me sounding like a normal person. <laughs> Um, so, once again, you can automatically, it's going to move you section. Physical orientation. So I'm pressing the right arrow. Hold the center. Let's get up and running. Setting things up. Customizing your sense player. You can set the majority of your personal preferences for how... So, you do have, yes, as Kelly mentioned, over five hours of demonstration and of... growing. Yes, and growing, of course, it's going to have to grow with all these updates, absolutely. So, um, yes, five hours of growing of a demonstration of basically all of the programming. So I take you through most of the main functions, maybe not every single detailed function, but I at least get you familiar with every program on the unit and generally how to use it. And most importantly, the, the consistent things that you're going to encounter again and again. Yeah, so... <laughs> Jay's voice is running out. You know, we were kind of really kind of doing this kind of uh, off the cuff here, but the next thing we're going to talk about that was enough about the sense player again. We will field any questions towards the end here, which will probably be sometime in the next 20 minutes or so. Because the next thing we're going to talk about is the Braille Sense update that is forthcoming. Now, we really wanted to have these updates out by now, but you know what? Uh, there's a saying that says, you hope in one hand, and I can't remember the rest of how that goes. But, um, Maybe not finish and, that sentence. <laughs> but but it's, uh, it is coming this year, uh, in, in July, because we've seen it. And we're, there's those of us on the beta team have used it, and it's, it's pretty exciting. Like, the, the, uh, the third-party applications, if you were to buy your sense player today, uh, there's not a mobile screen reader on the one today. That, uh, but we're hoping by the end of July, right? Yeah, I think so. We're hoping that by the because you know it has to go through Q and A, and you know I, I I get the privilege of seeing how these guys are working. They're working like madmen and women over there in Korea. We we come we we on the test team complain about stuff and they fix it like in hours sometimes sometimes minutes. It's amazing. So the stuff is coming out. But you don't want it today. <laughs> I can just say that. But if you get your, your sense of player, you get the nifty case, and it does have a lot of uses, even in its current state, especially the podcaster. That's fantastic. Um, the, the web radio, just using it as a multimedia player. Um, and it's just, you know, a recorder. It, it's a, one, one thing we did not mention is that it does actually serve as a very good field recorder with... True, better than CD quality, I think it was a 92,000 hertz stereo. Um, so there, there are stereo speakers on the device, which are nice and loud, like as far as laptop quality speakers go on the sense player. And there are stereo microphones, one on either kind of in a diagonal from one another, one on the upper left and one on the bottom right of the device. So you can set the device down between you and maybe your uh, producing a podcast and you want to have that definition um, between, you know, that, that kind of that feel when people are listening is one person is talking from over here and another one from over there. But as does the, the Braille Sense, the Sense Player does support a number of USB-C plug-and-play peripherals like mixers. Yep. Jenny talked to me. And, oh, I think my battery's dying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, try pressing the little button there. Oh, no, I'm still here. All right, so I think this battery is dying now. Oh, there you go, you're um, back. I'm back, but I don't think for long. Anyway, um, so the peripherals, so Jenny talked me into a peripheral called the, yeah. Rockville Rock Mix. I'll fill in the blank. Yeah. <laughs> May I borrow your contaminated microphone? It's enough. I have, I'm on the products, <laughs> I promise. Okay. All right, the Rockville Rock Mix Pro 4, don't get the 5 if you're in the market for this thing. I use it for all my Zoom presentations, by the way. You probably heard in my Sense Player main menu, I did have the Zoom application. It works 
for both audio and video fabulously. Um, but you can plug in your Rockville Rock Mix mixer and get the loopback feature where you can actually get the internal audio of the uh, sense player or the Braille sense looping back into the, the feed for the, uh, the Zoom meeting, which is, saves a whole bunch of like messing around with cables, things like that. So, I mean, these, so I think of the sense player as really kind of a companion uh, product to the Braille sense, not that you have to have a Braille sense, uh, but I, I think there's just a lot, if you're familiar with Braille sense, a lot of this user interface is going to make good sense to you. Uh, so the Braille sense, Six. Now, what's what's on the horizon is is it's, it really is on the horizon. Um, we do have improvements uh, to the, the you know additions to the device itself, and I'll let you talk about some of those additions, okay, Jenny? And and then, but but what I'm excited about is the update from Android 10. You know, we 13 is out now, 14 is in beta, uh, but you got to start somewhere. We started on Android 10. But we are um, on, on the verge of advancing that to Android 12. Now, as far as the, the Braille first applications that Hims develops ourselves from from the uh, cloud uh, services aspect of things, right from the file manager, you've got Google Drive, Dropbox, One OneDrive. You know, it's just fantastic. If, if I could. If I had one of these when I was in school, I, would, I could rule the world. But, um, so we've got, from that aspect to it, to the, you know, terrestrial radio, web radio, um, all those things, it just, the Android version doesn't really matter. But for those applications that are being developed today and in the future, a lot of them are only compatible back to Android version 6. Um, I'm aware of one app it's only uh, a compatible back to Android version 8. So what a jump to Android 12 gives you is not just a number, but it gives you uh, guaranteed reliability and compatibility uh, into the future with the BrailleSense 6 line. Okay, and that's of course, involves both the 6 and the 6 mini note takers. So, um, the other thing that we're looking at, doing, let me know if I'm stealing your thunder on this one, Jenny, is we, we have not seen it yet. She has. She's, you know, she's over there. For the last 10 years, Jenny has been an Iowa transplant to South Korea already. I can't believe it's already been 10 years. But um, the, the addition of a new browser experience is uh, on the horizon. And we're going to have a web browser that supports all the things, included Java, including JavaScript. When, yeah, yeah. So when you when you uh, log on to that hotel Wi-Fi, and it says, "Oh, you're connected," but oops, you got to go and uh, you log in using the web interface. Hopefully, this will make this uh, a whole lot more streamlined for that that purpose. So that's exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic back over to Jenny and um, and let you kind of talk about the rest of the things that are coming. So yes, I've, I've seen pieces of the browser. Part of that is because I actually get to help make the user interface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so it's going to look a lot like our current browser, except with a lot more navigability. There'll be a lot more keys, and we're sort of streamlining these a little bit. So. For example, page, you know, backspace people go back a page, entropy will go forward a page. Same way with heading, you know, backspace H. Because right now there, there's some really funky keys yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, we're trying to make them a little more sensible. And there are things like, for example, headings. So you have backspace H for back heading, enter H for forward heading, and then space, space H will give you the headings list. So, um, we really try to make this a lot more intuitive. In addition to um, all of what we're all talked about, so yes, we'll have to post script. You'll also be able to, for example, right now we have the option to use Backspace L to open um, a situation where you can get the Android. Like, for example, if you have a Zoom link and you're able to open Zoom, you should be able to do that now directly from our browser. If it's a YouTube video, you should just be able to press enter on it and open. So it's going to be the modern experience with the interface you already know, and even that sort of tweaks a little bit for sensibility. So we've got that. We also have 
Um, you to do a list application, which I know is a really popular thing. So yeah, you can organize your tasks and everything. And what's really cool about that is you're able to connect web pages, memos, appointments, um, all kinds of everything, you know, things that you can so you can actually link the calendar to your task as well. So um, and that will be in the organizer menu. And we've also added, some of you will not care a lick about this, some of you will think it's great. Um, we've also added the games from the YouTube. We've brought those over now to the Braille students. Um, and mostly, I've found that people care about this in education. So, But you know, if you're just dying to play the dice game, to be able to shake your Braille Sin 6 mini and have it roll the dice for you, <laughs> you can now do that. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think. So, and again, if 12, we have noticed with Android 12 that the performance does seem to be improved. I have certainly noticed that with third-party apps, because, you know, we base what we do on Google's accessibility platform, so as it improves, so does what we offer, even though we don't change a whole lot. And so I have definitely noticed improvements in accessibility and that there are some apps that don't work as well in Android 10, and I look at it and get with the Android 12 and go, ooh, you know, this is a lot better. And of course, with our with our ability to make labels, uh, you can also pretty much almost make anything accessible. By the way, you can actually do that in the Sense Player as well. Did you know that, Earl? Say it, labels? Yeah, we can make labels. So, because unfortunately, in a lot of these media applications, you do encounter the unlabeled, unlabeled. So, we did think that it was probably necessary to be able to create labels even on the Sense Player mobile screen reader. So, we do have that option there too. All right. So we want to make sure that you do have time to ask us questions. So I think that we will go ahead and turn it over to y'all. So if you have something to shout out, just go ahead and do that, and we'll do our best to get the answer. So on the Sense Player, uh, with the screen reader that's coming, how are you actually, or how are they actually doing that? Are you just passing those arrows to the application, or are you actually navigating through the Google Accessibility Tree the way TalkBack does if you swipe? Uh, so we're actually using the same mobile screen reader that we're using on our Sense, which is based on the Google Accessibility Platform, but is our interface. So basically what we've done is we've taken our BrailleSense screen reader and remapped it for Sense Player keystrokes.
The FM radio, yes. The web radio, not. Unless you have a mixer that does loop back. Like, like Earl was talking about this little rock fill. Um, which, by the way, I do recommend. It's very portable. It's like five by seven, weighs about a pound and a half. If you do need something to, to handle that kind of thing, it's really good. It's like 75 bucks. It's really nice. Um, if you have a, a device that will do loop back, uh, you can do web radio. Um, we'll have to check on that because I know there are other devices that allow that. But as far as I knew, there were legal issues with that, so I'm not in entirely sure how it works on other devices. Um, the yeah, radio, yes. So the, the sense player, uh, web radio podcast, do you have to know some special whatever you, RSS feed address? Oh no, we, we do have a search. You're, you're good. Um, so. Yeah, so there are two ways to do it. Um, so for podcasts, we actually have, what do we have? We have iTunes, we have Chipotter, we have three different search engines you can use. And you can, with iTunes, you can choose to search by category or you can search by keyword. Uh, web radio is the same way. It has options. We have two different search engines and you have options to search by genre, language, country, blah, blah, blah. You can narrow it down or you can just go to keyword, and I actually like the keyword search because it searches all um, languages, genres, countries, so you all of it. And generally, if you type in English, you're going to get English responses. So. Um, but it doesn't limit you, and there's some things that you might miss if you narrow your search. So you can do it either way. But yes, we, we do for both the web radio and uh, podcast. We do have searchable engines. You can, at the same time, also enter them. So if you do know, for example, if you have another podcast, program that you use, and you want to, if you're able to export your feeds as an OPML, you can import that directly. So if you already have a catalog of things, and this is especially useful in the Brailstons. Same way with the Brailstons, uh, web radio. There's a web radio channel.ini in your web radio folder on both devices, and they're cross-compatible. So if you set one up, you can transfer it to the other one and import what you already have. Sense player, the app installer, mm -hmm. will that occasionally be updated, including new apps that can be installed? Um, sure. It's probably not terribly much because we're really just trying to include sort of the most popular things that we think Sense player users are going to want. And we are going to focus mostly on media and streaming applications because that's the general um, notion for the device. But, sorry? Yeah, it is, right. So it's a media device. So we're gonna, you know, things like Netflix and Apple Music and Spotify and you know Amazon Kindle and things like that. So earlier when he was uh, demonstrating it, it was big too for most of us couldn't stop talking. Is there a stop talking method? Um usually you end up just canceling out of what you're doing. We don't have a specific stop. Um, that's Good point, though. You know, we usually don't need it um, for most of what we do. There are a few instances where we can really use the, the, the shh key. <laughs> <laughs> but the biggest thing is, like, yeah. What all voices can you put on that? Can you put the Google TTS on there? No. Um, so this is one of the limitations. This is not going to be a Google certified device. So. Um, Cost factor. Yes, cost factors. Um, it costs quite a bit because we have to we have to go through certain security things. It also delays us because we have to wait for them to approve each release that we do, and we have to. It costs us per region per firmware update. So it's it's um, for a device like the Sense Player, it's not very cost effective to do that. So right now in our installer, we're including eSpeak. Um, the reason that we're doing that is there are certain things like Bard Mobile will not let you run without a, an Android TTS installed. And so, and it doesn't, it's not used all that often, but there are a couple places where accessibility doesn't seem to speak, so they rely on self-voicing controls. And right now, we're using eSpeak because that's the only free and open source Android TTS that I'm familiar with. I really feel like there have to be 
their options. I just haven't located them yet, so seriously, I'll, uh, I will absolutely take crowdsource ideas and try it. Which, we, which vocalized voices are available on that? Oh, yes, thank you um, for returning to your question. So, um, we pretty much offer the vocalizer voices for all localizations that we support. There are a few others that we've been asked to include, but I mean, we're talking, I don't know, there are 60 or 70 voices. And which, um, not to get really specific, but you, you might know this, which quality, because they offer several. There's Compact, oh, sure. there's Mobile, there's the, the highest grade one, there's, which, which one is it? Uh, I believe it's in, uh, Embedded Premium. Great. That's the highest quality, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. I don't think, well, no, I think premium high is the highest, so I think it's second up. But for a mobile operating system, you don't want to slow it down with quite that much, but I, I find it to be pretty good. It's the same as the Braille Sense has, if you've heard of it. That one sounded pretty good. It didn't, I read the first Victor Street, it sounded all muffled like this. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's, it, I can't really tell the, the huge difference between Yeah, Tom sounded really good there. Any other questions? If somebody, you have two new, you have two competitive uh, players out there that are updated, uh, both the Victor Stream and, and the Sense Player. So if somebody were relatively new and trying to figure out what to buy, mm -hmm. what would you, how would you describe the differences between the two devices? Well, uh, okay, so I'll borrow the microphone from you. Yeah. Oh, yours was working. Uh, it was. Oh, is it, did it fail again? Yeah, it did. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, that's what people have chosen to draw the most comparisons between the, the, the Sense Player and the Victory to Stream. And I have both of them. I've got the three in my house and stuff. And I like it as a book reader. I'm the kind of guy who likes to have books open to different things on different devices, and I just pick it up and, you know. So I've got my, my MLS e-reader sitting on a coffee table. I've got my screen sitting somewhere else. I've got my Sense Player usually with me. <laughs> um, on my person because I use it mostly. Uh, the, the, the biggest, strongest comparisons of the things that are in common between those devices are that uh, the Sense Player has stereo speakers and stereo microphones versus mono on the, the Victor Reader Stream. Uh, the the, the Hymns book readers have had Bluetooth since like, like 2005 or something. <laughs> Um, and and the, and the three, I'm not talking about the three because it's not included Bluetooth, but they did just now include Bluetooth in the three. Our speakers sound better <laughs> and louder than the three does. And here's a big one: um, we have a user replaceable battery. So you know, you slide the back off. So you, all batteries die eventually. So when yours starts to die, you notice it, and you just call us up and say, "I want to order a battery. We ship it to you." you you go along with life with your sense player, and then when the new battery arrives, you, you slap it in, and you plug it in, the charger all the way up, and you're off to the races. Now, there are those who try to justify the fact that perhaps the stream doesn't have a battery because neither does your cell phone usually, but I can tell you that if my iPhone, and I'm, I'm, I'm like from the future, you know, I'm using, a, I'm using an iPhone version, let's see, SE2, <laughs> from about four years ago. Um, when that battery dies, I just go to the Apple store and they just swap it off for me. I don't have to be without my phone for um, any, you know, for a number of days or weeks. So that's, those are the biggest comparisons now. I've got a big one though. Oh, Kelly has it. No. That's what I was going to say. Oh, no, 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 no. Netflix, Audible, all that stuff. So this is the divergence between the two products and where it gets to the point where you're now comparing apples to oranges. Because the, the Sense Player has the Smart Connect feature that allows you to connect to your smartphone and control it from across the room. It has the ability to um, serve as your, your media player for Netflix and Apple, you know, iTunes or Apple Music. Um, Pandora, iHeartRate, and this goes on and on. Any APK that you can download and install and use um, on the Sense Player, you're, you know, you can do that. On the Sense Player, you can't do that, obviously, on the stream, because it's just a, the stream is a really good book player. Uh, but the Sense Player is a really good book player, multimedia player, field recorder, and has support for some third party apps. But we don't want to, you know, when somebody calls me up and, and, and says, I want, I need, 
I, this, this, this third party app that most people have never heard of before doesn't work. We're not going to take responsibility for that. <laughs> We're not going to support third party applications other than, say, the ones that we include on the device when it ships that are in the installer. Even those are optionally installed. It's up to you to decide that you want to install it. We, we've put it there because we know it works. And we will offer some support for those, those third-party applications uh, to a degree, um, to a, a good, uh, you know, big degree for the applications that we include, but not so much for the things, you know, we're on our own, we're kind of all on our own when it comes to things like Netflix, but it works pretty good. I can tell you that today, I'm, but who knows what the company is going to do tomorrow with the next version, so. Are the extra batteries available now? Say it again? Extra batteries available now? Sure. Mm -hmm. She says sure. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I, I, you know, it's an accessory. Um, I haven't seen pricing on, the, the, on that accessory. Okay. But I know, I mean, yeah. Is your battery a proprietary battery? Or yes. It is a, a proprietary, it is a proprietary lithium polymer battery. So that three times. Um, but you're, we're talking about what, 12 to 16 hours worth of use per charge? Yeah, about 12, I think. About 12, she says. Depending on what you're doing with it, it's phenomenal. I mean, if you treat it like you treat your phone, most of us charge our phones overnight and then we're good to go for the next day. With the sense player, I've gone three, four days between charges because I just use it here and there. Um, but I, I do like to charge all my stuff at the end of the day.